Magandang araw po sa ating hat. We're continuing our studies on uh, church history. Now, we are dealing on the subject of 20th century outcomes in the Philippines. No, nasa Pilipinas na po tayo. Last time we talked about the, uh, the entry of the Protestants when the um, American forces uh, regained, uh, when the American forces regained or gained the territory of the Philippines. When the Spaniards surrendered its uh, control over the Philippines when the Treaty of Paris was signed. No. So, <coughs> so, noon ho nagtagumpay ang Amerika, no, nakapasok ang iba't ibang mga uh, grupo ng protestante, quote and quote protestants in the Philippines. No. So, because of her close ties with the Spanish government, the Catholic Church suffered losses when the Spaniards were forced out. The losses started when Filipinos' forces began to win and continued when the Americans came in. No, hindi man ho tumigil ang ating mga kababayan, ang ating mga pa para ho uh, magkamit na kalayaan ang ating bansa. At tayo po itinulungo ng Amerika para makamit ang kalayaan ito. No. So, the resentment against the Spaniards was so great that the church replaced its Spanish priest. No? Uh, with the American priest. No. Catholic Church leaders soon found, however, that replacing Spanish priests with Americans only increased Filipino resentment. The problem resulted from the Catholic Church continuing use of aliens priests rather than Filipinos. So, makita ko natin na mayroon tatlong pare. No? Sino yung tatlong pare? Na namatay dahil... Ang gusto nila ay Pilipino dapat ang mabigyan opportunity mga Pilipino. Kailan lang diyan? Bumbursa. no? <clears throat> the, uh, the pattern set by the Catholic Church from the beginning of Spanish rule in the Philippines may explain the reason that a large number of priests in the Philippines continues to be foreigners. No? Catholic historical patterns of relating to state powers have continued in the Philippines. The Church received benefits from the government which included the friar lands. No. The fact that the Catholic orders or the friars owned 167,127 hectares of land. No. Gano'n ka lagi ho? 167,127 hectares. No. Ito po yung laki, luwang, ng tatawag nating friar's land aroused feelings of anger of the Filipinos. The provinces where the priors owned the land, the, owned the larger land areas were the areas of great unrest during Spanish rule. To prevent continued unrest no, during the American rule, no, the Americans had to solve the friar land problems. No. Nung dumating ang Amerikano dito, sabi natin, most of ng malalaki at prominenting lupa ay sakop ng mga pare o nung prior tatawag natin quote unquote prior lands no so gumawa ng solusyon ang ang Amerikano uh, the, the American government in order to resolve these issues no ano pong ginawang uh, solusyon ng American government the American government paid uh, over 7 million no over 7 million USD. Noong time na yan, napakalaki pa yan. No? The US government paid the Pope. No? Ang binayara nung yung Pope. Of more than 7 million US dollars. That is recorded. No? To purchase what they call most of the prior lands. No? Most of the prior lands. Then, the United States sold the land to the Filipinos as a way to solve the prior land land holding problems. No, with this move, the problem of the time, which is the prior land, was solved. No, many historians believe that the method simply continued. No, uh, social injustice in you know, in the, what they call the land holdings. Filipinos did not give up control of their church affairs without a struggle. However, the Philippine Independent Church soon established gained many Catholic members. So, so yung, yung uh, prior land by paying the Pope 
of more than 7 million US dollar para ma-regain ang territory nito na, na naibigay sa mga pare. Na, then, yung movement before, no? yung movement before uh, to Filipinize, no? to Filipinize the church. <clears throat> na hindi ho, kahit nawala na ho yung mga Spaniards, no? ay hindi pa rin magawa because of the control with uh, of the Roman Catholic Church sa church sila, no? Kaya ho nabuo yung tawag ho nating the Philippine no, Philippine Independent Church. Independent Church, no? Ang tawag ho natin ngayon yan is the Aglipayan, no? The Aglipayan Church. <clears throat> the Filipino Independent Church, no? People in some communities left the Catholic Church as whole congregations claiming their church buildings. No. Later, the Supreme Court decisions, both Philippine and American uh, Supreme Court, determined that the buildings were the property of the Catholic Church. No. So, ibig sabihin, noong nagkaroon ng Filipino Independent Church, no, Filipino Independent Church, <coughs> So, ang mga kongregasyon mismo, buong mga kongregasyon ay lumipat no? sa tinatawag natin Filipino Independent Church. Uh, taking control of the churches that was built before during the Spanish regime. No? So, nagkaroon ng kasuha niya sa korte no? at nagkaroon ho ng decision ang Supreme Court ng Pilipinas magiging the Supreme Court sa Amerika at magkaroon ho sila ng iisang decision. Ang iisang decision the buildings that was uh, established no during the during the Spanish regime and owned by the Roman Catholic Church no shall be owned by the Roman Catholic Church <coughs> so because of that yung mga, mga independent Filipino independent churches were was forced to move out of the churches and build and to build their what they call their churches important Filipino revolutionaries stand related to the founding of the Philippine Independent Church. No. One of the key Filipino revolutionaries is Apolinario Mabini. Apolinario Mabini proposed a Catholic Church free from Spanish control. No. Sino ba yun si Apolinario Mabini? No. Nasaan ba si Apolinario Mabini? Anong, anong Philippine peso? Ha? Si Apolinario Mabini. Maranda mo, Pastor Mario Joy? <coughs> Saan ba na ako si Apolinario Mabini? He proposes a free Catholic Church, no? Free from Spanish control and led by Filipinos under the Pope's authority. In 1899, no? 1899, Gregorio Aglipay, a military vicar general of the Revolutionary Army under Emilio Aguinaldo, organized an all-Filipino National Catholic Church, no? He organized an all-Filipino National Catholic Church. It is an it is envisioned before no before the Americans coming over the Philippines no na envision na po nila yung forming of the Filipino uh indigent Filipino churches no in the beginning when Mabini was calling for a Filipino Catholic church and Aglipay worked toward the end also another revolutionary Isabelo de los Reyes went with a group of Filipinos to Rome they wanted to express their concern directly to the Pope. But even though they acknowledged the Pope as head of the church, along with the changes they proposed in the Philippines, he did not accept their position. No. The Australians returned to the Philippines in 1902, and he pronounced the founding of the Philippine Independent Church, naming Gregorio Aglipay as his supreme head. Historical records seem to show that he lost no that De Los Reyes' pronouncement surprised most Filipino, including Aglipay. At first, Aglipay refused no, to accept De Los Reyes' pronouncement because he still hoped for a reconciliation with the Pope. No. However, after every attempt to gain acceptance from the Pope had been refused, Aglipay accepted the position of Obispo Maximo of the Iglesia Filipina Independiente. No, yun ang pangalagin pangalan. Iglesia Filipina Independiente. No. At si uh, Aglipay, no, 
ang si Hong uh, Gregorio Aglipay ang naging Obispo Maximo or the General Bishop or Overhead Overall Bishop of the Iglesia Filipina Independiente. The Iglesia Filipina Independiente no, received much immediate support from the Filipino people. Historians estimate that from 100 to 300 priests joined the new church along with 1,600 former, 1,600,000 former Catholics. No, ganun kalaki yung influx, no? So, we start to see as a few members, Catholic members, to 300 members. No, maraming mga Filipino uh, priests joined the, the Iglesia Filipina Independiente. No, and at the same time, uh, there are so many members, no, that's around 1.6 million members of the former members of the Roman Catholic Church. No, nalalo ko po sa marami yung probinsya na hati sa tuwing panahon ng ano, sa tuwing panahon ng mahal na araw. No, nung ako po yung nasa probinsya ng Mindoro, may isa pong bayan doon, uh, bayan ng uh, Paluan, no? Uh, kapag ka, ang tawag dito, kapag ka mayroong mga seremonyas, no? O particularly yung mga, ano yung mga mat, parada, parada ng pagmahal na araw, yung ano yun? Sunday yata, Sunday morning, no? Sunday morning may parada. Hati ho yung bayan, no? Hati yung bayan. Yung kayong Roman Catholic, may sarili daan sila at yung independente, may sarili sila daan, no? Inahati nila yung daan. Ganyan ho yung resulta nung separation of uh, breakaway in the Roman Catholic Church. The Iglesia Pilipina Independiente, uh, those joining Aglipayan, Aglipay equal approximately around 12, 25%, no? Around 25% of the 6,000 or 6 million 300 Catholic members of the day, no? That's around 25 percent, almost one fourth, no? One fourth of the of the congregation. As we noted earlier, sometimes we, the an in, entire town would join the independent church and consider the local Catholic buildings as theirs, no? Sa, sa lalo sa probinsya, sa, sa Cebu, sa Iloilo, no? Talaga hong, o sa iba't ibang mga probinsya, magkatabi, magkatabi yung kanilang nilang mga katedral, no? yung Roman Catholic and the Independent no? at malaking kasuhan pa ngayon may story dyan na uh, kasi yung, <coughs> nagamit yung santo doon sa kabila no? kaya malaking kasuhan mo yan as you learn earlier in your studies the Independent Church took a Unitarian doctrinal position concerning God and denied the doctrine of the Trinity that God is one revealed in three persons as Father, Son and the Holy Spirit <coughs> okay then we have the what we call the Iglesia Evangelica Methodista in Las Islas, Filipinas, or the Emirate. No, it came out of a background of interesting people and events. A search for the roots of the events leading to the church founding leads us back to the Father Jacinto Zamora. No, Father Jacinto Zamora is one of the three priests na pinatay sa bayan, no, the Gumbursa, no, Gomez Burgos and Zamora. They were martyred in 1872. <clears throat> no. uh, Father Racinto Zamora was the uncle of Paulino Zamora. No. Kung, na, kung na, nabaso nyo no, yung istorya ko ng, ng pagpasok ng Biblia o New Testament sa Pilipinas, no? isa ko sa nagdala ng Bible sa Pilipinas is si Paulino. No? Paulino Zamora. We do not know how great an effect of Zamora's death at the hands of the Spanish had on his nephew, Paulino Zamora. However, Paulino took a position radical enough that he got the Bible from a ship's captain when the church officials were trying to keep Bibles out of the people's hand. Now, during those times, no, sabi nga natin, na kapag ikaw ay may Biblia, ang tawag ko sa'yo ay uh, kalaban ng simbahan. No? Yan daw ay gawa ng demonyo, yung Biblia. <coughs> Kaya pinagbabawal ho yung basahin uh, ng mga ordinaryong tao. No? Pero, ito ho si Paulino Zamora, which is the nephew, no? nephew of uh, father uh, Jacinto Zamora, ay nagkaroon ho siya ng chance na magkaroon ho ng kopya ng New Testament so magitan po na isang kapitan. No? Kapitan. <clears throat> okay. The Spaniards Jane Zamora, 
when he, they found out he had the Bible, isipin nyo, noong time na ho yun, noong panahon noong mga Kastila, Kastila Loy, ha? Uh, kapag may Biblia ka, posible kayong papatay, posible lang kayong pabilanggo. No? Noong nalaman ho na na si uh, Paulino Samora ay mayroong Biblia, pinabilanggo siya. He was released after the Americans and Spaniards signed the treaty ending the war between the two nations. No? Ano naman ako ngayon ito with regards to the founding of the Humilip Church? No? Knowing these events in Samora's life, we are not surprised to find records that indicate he attended services led by the first Protestant missionaries to arrive in the Philippines. No. His sons, Nicholas, Ricardo, and Jesus, no, attended with him. Later, the Samoras began attending Methodist services, and Paulino declared that he was a Protestant. When he was asked to preach, Paulino refused for himself and offered the services of his son, Nicholas. No. Apparently, Nicolas Samora's abilities impressed the people because the Methodists ordered him as their first minister. No. So, medyo nakita ko nila uh, kasi nagdeklara na protestante si Paulino. No? Uh, he was asked though, to preach in the first church, no? first one of the first services in the Philippines no? by the American missionary. No. Actually po, ang unang-unang American missionary na dumating sa Pilipinas is uh, an army chaplain. As army chaplain. A Methodist uh, army chaplain. No. Siya po ang unang-unang nagkaroon o nagkanda po ng service sa Manila. No. Uh, ang inaasahan po niya ay mga sundalo lang ang atin. Pero hindi po. Pati mga uh, iba't ibang tao, mga local citizens. No mga residente ng Manila ay naki-join, no? naka-attend sa first service, no, sa first Protestant service in the Philippines, no. And after that, no, ito mga Samoras, no. Uh, joined the 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 church, no. Since the first sabi natin the first uh, service was held by a Methodist chaplain, no, a Methodist army chaplain. Uh, Noong nagpresenta ko si Paulino Samora na sabi niya siya ay protestante, he was asked to preach, no? At, pero medyo pinahinaan niya ng loob si Paulino Samora kaya sinabi niya yung anak na lang niya, no? At alam niya na mayroong galing naman yung kanyang anak which is one of the anak ni Paulino Samora is si Nicolas Samora, no? At because of that, no? He was trained by the Americans and later on, he was promoted by the American chaplain. He was promoted by the American chaplain to become the elder of the church. Ah, to become the elder of the church, no, in the Philippines, no, to become the elder of the church in the Philippines. Actually, Nicolas Samora was used by God in, uh, in the, no, in the formation, in the formation of the Knox. Well, Knox Memorial Church, the Knox Memorial Church, which is a Methodist church, no? It, uh, siya ho ang pangalwa sa pinaka prominent uh, Methodist church sa Pilipinas. The first is the Central Methodist Church, no? <clears throat> so, in because of that, no? Samora later on was, ano, was ordained as a minister of the Methodist Church in the Philippines, <clears throat> no? He was ordained as a minister was the first Filipino minister in the Philippines. No. <clears throat> Napakalaga po kasi sa Methodist, yung ordinasyon ng minister. No. <clears throat> Kung naalala nyo po, nung ang Methodist so ay nadala ho sa tiyatawag natin sa Amerika, nagkakaproblema po sila. <clears throat> Bak- dahil wala silang ordained minister. No. So kumukuha po sila ng ordained minister from the Church of England no. para lang mag-administer ng mga services and mga special occasions doon sa Amerika. Kaya sa Pilipinas so, nung uh, nag-report itong chaplain na to, I, I forgot the name of the chaplain, no? Uh, later on siguro, mabangit ma- ma- natin name of the chaplain. <coughs> Reported to the uh, a US Conference or the Methodist US Conference, no? <coughs> With regards to the presence of uh, Nicolas Samora, he was uh, ordained, later on he was ordained as the first minister, first Filipino minister in the Philippines. Nicolas Samora became the first ordained Protestant minister in the Philippines. No. <clears throat> sa lahat ng ministro sa Pilipinas, siya ang unang-unang naging ordinadong minister. No, minister, 
ministro ng Panginoon. Nicholas became unhappy with the Philippine Methodist Mission, <coughs> no? <coughs> because the Philippine mission, uh, Methodist Mission was made a part of the Methodist Episcopalian Church in America. No? He said, we do not have ill feelings nor hatred, hatred toward Americans and their colleagues. We only want to be independent. We only want to be independent. Yun ho yung deklarasyon ni Samora. And because of that, no, tandaan natin, no? Ah, uh, may siguro maunawaan ho natin yung pakiramdam ni Samora because isa sa kanyang mga uncle, no? Eh sino? <coughs> si Father Sino? Yan? Father Jacinto Samora, which is a part of the Kumbumbursa na ang kanilang adhikain is no. Ang churches of Pilipinas should be led by Filipinos, no? The churches in the Philippines should be led by the Filipinos. Yung adhikain home yun ay naipasa sa kaniyang tatay, no? Na si Paulino Samora <coughs> na nagkaroon ng usas sa nagkaroon ng kauna ng kauna unang Biblia sa Pilipinas at nabilanggo sa pagkakaroon ng Biblia sa Pilipinas, <coughs> no? <coughs> so dosya ho ay na ordinado na na, na, minis, na ministro, no? Ng iglesia. <coughs> Uh, ang interest pa rin mo niya, yung kanyang hadikain, ang unang-unang hadikain ng kanilang pamilya, ay ano, ang, ang Filipino Church should be, on, should be led by Filipino minister. And because of that, no, because of that, nagkaroon ho ng matatag ang niyatawag ho natin uh, Iglesia Evangelica Metodista in Las Islas, Pilipinas. No. <coughs> Wag ho natin uh, tandaan ho na, umapasin niyo po, ang mga independent church noon ho sa Pilipinas no ay hindi pa rin ho nawawala yung ano hindi pa rin nawawala yung uh, Espanya no hindi pa rin nawawala yung kultura ng Spaniards no kaya nga ho nung yung dati kung dati oh yung mga iba diyan abutan pa sa sa high school no sa high school hanggang college yung subject na Spanish no kasi hanggang matagal din ng panahon no daan din almost almost 100 years din, almost 100 years, uh, less than a century, no? Na maging yung teachings, part of the teaching, teaching so, sa ating scholastic system, no? Is yung Spaniards, so Spanish, oh, Spanish language, no? Sabi ni Nicolas Zamora, wala siyang hatred sa Amerikano. Ang gusto lang niya, no? Is, ang Filipino churches should be led by Filipinos. Okay. Just three years following the founding of the Umilip, no? Three years founding the founding of the Vimilip, another strong Filipino personality in the person of Felix Manalo founded a third independent church in the Philippines. No? So we're talking now on the independent Filipino churches. No? The first is what we call the Filipino Independent the Iglesia uh, Filipino Iglesia Filipino Independiente. No? The second is no uh, Iglesia Methodista in Las Inlas, Pilipinas or the Union of Church. The, church, the third Filipino independent church is led by Felix Manalo. No? It was founded in 1914. No? It was founded in 1914. So, ang ang Union Iglesia Evangelica Methodista in Las Islas Pilipinas. Islas Pilipinas. Yan. Himilip. No? Ang Himilip was found in 1911. Ah. So, ang Iglesia ni Cristo under Felix Barano was founded in 1914. Ah. <coughs> so, matatanda natin that the Filipino independent church no had taken a unitarian doctrinal position no so what is the difference between the uh, Roman Catholic church and the uh, uh, Iglesia Filipino Independiente no ito ay trinitarian no? trinitarian and this is a Unitarian. Yimilip is a, no, is a 
Trinitarian, no. And ah, uh, this is what they And Iglesia ni Manalo, no. Is also a Unitarian, no. So, Samantha, you will remember that from earlier studies, the independent church had taken a Unitarian doctrinal position concerning God. No. So, what's the difference between Uni and Trini? No. Um, alam niyo now from the spelling. No. Ito ay Tri, ito ay Yun. Ha. Sabihin, this is one, this is three. No. The Iglesia and the Cristo also moved away from the traditional Christian belief when it declared that only the Father is divine and that Christ and Holy Spirit are not. No. Pero pinahala nila kay Cristo, even though Jesus Christ is the divine. No. I repeat, the Iglesia moved away from the traditional Christian belief when it declared that only the Father is divine and that Christ and the Holy Spirit are not. The Iglesia de Cristo Andan Manalo took the position that it is the revival no, of the true Church of Christ. No, It is, uh, natin, no? most of the time, the, the movement is to return to the New Testament teaching. No? Thus, it seems strange that the new church in Christ's name should deny the biblical truth concerning the divinity of Christ. Bigyan nakakatuwa no? Aglipa Zamora had worked from a primary concern for Filipino leadership in the country. In contrast, Manalo based his church founding on his newly discovered spiritual truths. No? Ito doon niya ibinase yung kanyang pagtatayo na iglesia sa kanyang uh, uh, sa ano ba background ni Manalo? No? Later makikita natin yung background ni Manalo. The very year of the church founding, 1914, is supposed to fulfill a New Testament prophecy. No. So, <clears throat> so pag-aaral mo natin, no, pinakikita na natin dito yung, ano, yung unang, mga unang mga independente na iglesia sa Pilipinas. No. So last time we talk we talk about the different missions you know the different missions that come over the Philippines and most of that missions also and most of that missions unified no most of that missions the protestant missions in the Philippines do join the committee no they unified together and they formed what we call the united no the united church of christ in the Philippines. Yeah. Sino po ito? No, last time we discussed about the disciples of Christ, no, the the brethren, the the Philippine Methodist, the the Philippine Methodist, no, uh, the Presbyterian. They joined together into a committee, and then later on the formation of the United Church of Christ in the Philippines. Now. Let's talk about the World War II, no? The World War II. Like what other aspect of Filipino life, World War II affected the church greatly. The destruction of church building revealed that the most object, uh, obvious effect, no? Ita no sa mga prominenteng iglesia or buildings, no? Uh, was broken down, no? Actually, uh, isa ho sa the center church, the central church of the Methodist Church, no? Ay hindi magamit sa habang po ng matagal-tagal na panahon. Kaya ho naging prominente yung Knox Memorial Church, no? <clears throat> However, Americans' financial aid overcame the long-lasting effects of building loss. A more serious effect during the wartime occupation can be found in the effort made by Japanese to bring all the churches into a union or one organization. They call the Union as the Evangelical Church in the Philippines. No. So, nung nagkaroon mo tayo ng tatawag ko natin Japanese Occupation. No? Uh, buhay na si Gloria Pastor no Rejoy. No? Japanese Occupation, no. they wanted to organize, no? to, they wanted to organize the Philippine churches into one group. No? The into one group, or they called is a Union of Churches in the Philippines. No? That's why the Evangelical Church in the Philippines was no, was uh, was promulgated. No, 
the evangelical church in the Philippines. Many Protestant churches refused to join no, this, uh, this group. No. So, <clears throat> most of the evangelicals no, refuse, or Protestant churches refuse to join the evangelical church in the Philippines. No. Sino ho yung mga ref that refuse to join? The Episcopalian, no, the Methodist, the Baptist, the Christian and Missionary Alliance, and the Philippine Independent Church, or is the Aglipaya Church. Greater control seems to have been the motive behind the Japanese attempt to force the Union. The effects of the forced Union did not last long after the war's end. First, as already noted, many churches refused to join. No. Second, following the Japanese defeat, some churches said they had never really been part of that Union. Because the Union implied cooperation with the enemy leaders, Leaders who had participated were accused of collaboration after the war. No. When the war began, American missionaries either went into hiding, a few were killed, or were imprisoned by the Japanese. Of course, their loss left many church leadership positions vacant. Filipinos stepped into the vacant position, unlike the short-time effects seen in the loss of buildings in the forced union of churches, Filipinos who stepped into church leadership positions left vacant by the missionaries continued to hold their position of leadership after the war. No. Ano naman ho yung mga important developments, no? National development since the World War II. No. Dalawa ho ang dating makikita, no? You can list the major national developments since World War II and explain the effects of the major development on the churches. No. Three major factors seem to start out as the more important national development influencing Philippine Christianity since World War II. They are as follows. First, is the national independence. Second, is the migration to Mindanao. And the third, the great population growth. No? Ito yung national development after the World War II. No? First is what we call the national independence. Second is the migration to Mindanao. No? And the third is the great population growth. Siguro yung mga sa so panahon natin yun, hindi masyadong alam yung uh, migration to Mindanao. No? Kung mapupunta po kayo sa Mindanao, mapapasin nyo po sa Mindanao ay marami po dyan Ilocano no? at maraming mga Bisaya. No? Talaga may mga lugar-lugar po dyan na puro Ilocano pagkamisa. No? Because of that what we call the migration to Mindanao. On July 4, 1946, no? the Philippines regains her independence which General Aguinaldo had declared no, on June 12, 1898. The, the nationalistic drive that sparked repeated rebellions during the time of Spanish domination that resisted American takeover that drove Aglipay to found the independent church and that caused many to sacrifice their lives bore fruit on the long-awaited day of independence. The opportunity for world Filipinos of government, economy, and church had arrived. The wartime effect of Filipinos no, filing church leadership positions gave Philippine church life a good lead toward Filipinization. Mindanao, the land of promise, called out to Filipinos in the beginning of the full national independence. No. People began moving to Mindanao, frontier marching national independence with their own personal independence. Kaya marami yung mga taga Ilocos, no? o mga Ilocano na puntahan mo dyan. No? Kaya, kung makikita nyo, may mga bayan dyan na halos Ilocano na katira. No? So, nagkaroon ng different communities. Hindi lang ho mga uh, Mindanawenos no? ang nakatira ngayon dyan. No? Lack of land in Luzon pushed people south as seemingly great opportunity in Mindanao pulled them there. Migration to Mindanao brought difficulties for the earlier mission committee agreements. No? Tandahon natin na nagkaroon ng uh, divisions kung saan pupunta yung mga churches no? and different missions. Ito may ang problema. Because of the migration in the Mindanao, nagka-problema doon sa committee agreement. No? Bakit? Siyempre yung mga Ilocano sa Ilocos, no? ay hindi po sila uh, ibang mission group ang may hawa. No? Sa Mindanao ay ibang mission group ang may hawa. So nung nagpuntahan mo sila sa Mindanao, daladala din nila yung kanila mga different no? denomination na pinanggalingan sa Luzon. No. You may remember that committee agreements had assigned Mindanao mostly to the Congregationalists 
while the Methodists held the primarily responsibility for Luzon. When Methodists joined the migration to Mindanao, <coughs> question about committee arose. Now, of course, some of the Methodists would join the congregational churches in Mindanao. But likely many would simply quit attending any church if they did not find a Methodist church. <coughs> Nalala ko po lang po yung nasa, nasa Mindoro, no? Uh, nung wala pa pong Methodist Church, no, yung mga maraming Methodist Church sa Mindoro o Methodist members sa Mindoro attending the church, our church, uh, Abcop Church in, in, in Mindoro. No. <clears throat> Noong nagkaroon na ng tayo ang United Methodist Church uh, sa Mindoro ng church, <clears throat> no, nagpaalam din sila, bumalik sila doon sa kanilang home church. <clears throat> the Methodists felt a commitment to follow up their people moving south and the various missions bodies in general brought their committee agreement to an end. Kaya ako ngayon, nagkaroon na ako ng floor replacement sa different uh, parts of the country. No? Uh, open ako ngayon to everybody. No? Open to everybody. The migration of a large number of people to Mindanao matched the end of the committee agreement resulted in rapid evangelical church growth in the South. People characterized by a willingness to take the risk of moving to new places tended to be open to new ideas in all areas of life. They more likely would consider hearing an evangelical witness. Also, those who migrated to Mindanao left their home, towns, and often their parents who gave them freedom to consider new spiritual ideas. <coughs> Isa ko sa mga tinitingnan lagi ko natin, pero open tayo ng mga churches, ano, yung openness ng tao. Uh, tanda ko natin, pagbago lipat talaga, open sila sa mga ideas, ano, open sila sa mga friendship, open sila sa new religion, no? kaya sila open na open sila na nabagay na natin ang Ebanghelyo. Kaya ho, yun, doon din ho lumakas, no? doon din lumakas ang different churches doon sa mga probinsya na marami ho nagkaroon ng migration. No? Since the end of World War II, the Philippines has had one of the highest birth rates of all nations. No. Kaya ako sabi natin, mayroong uh, uh, gro- ano yun, population explosion. No. Mayroong population explosion. Tayo ang pinakamabilis mga anak. No. Uh, magkaroon tayo pinaka- may, pinakamabilis na birth rate sa buong mundo. No. Hindi ko lang kung anong epekto, kung bakit na lang tayo ang mabilis. No? Of course, you are familiar with the phrase, population explosion. No? Yung mga important to Protestant churches in a country with a high population growth rate is concerned that they grow in membership as well. If a church membership does not double when the population doubles, it likely has not won the fate of the children of its own members. No? A serious concern for all evangelical denomination. Kasi, uh, the natural growth of the church, no? Uh, kapag nag-double yung population, nagkaroon ng explosion, population explosion, pati yung population ng church, no? Will explode. Bakit? Kasi yung mga anak ng mga members, no? Ay dumadami siya, they will explode, help in the uh, natural growth, no? That is what we call the natural church development, NCD, no? Part of the NCD. <clears throat> Okay, now we're going to talk about the general church development after the World War II. No? <clears throat> after the World War II. <clears throat> First, we'll consider the Catholic Church development. No? Because they are part of what we call the church history. No? And we will be able to explain Roman Catholic Church growth since the World War. No? And it relates to one major problem in its growth pattern. The fact that Catholic membership equal, equaled 82% of the nation's population in 1965 demonstrate the church has grown as rapidly as the birth rate no hanggang ngayon no, ang catholic church ang tinatawag nating uh, majority religion in the philippines no more around 80% sa amin no i think ganun pa rin around 80% uh, of our population are uh, catholic no in contrast, as we noted earlier, the Aglipayan Church membership stayed the same in number, but it experienced a great drop in percentage of the population. No, from 15 percent. No, when it started in 1901, 1901, then no, in 1965 it becomes 5 percent. No, so hindi na siya 
nung 1965, pumapatak siya ng nine, number 4, no? Number 4 po siya sa ranking, no? With regards to the different, uh, different churches. The, the first is the Catholic, the second na ho, nung 1965, is the Evangelicals, no? The Evangelicals, and the third is the Muslim, and the fourth now becomes the Agrippayan, no? The Catholic Church grew in organization as well as in number, no? The following list give us an idea of its growth and development following the war. Ano kaya ang mga nag-contribute sa growth ng, ng Roman Catholic Church? Even though wala na po tayo sa under ng tatawag nating Spanish control, Spanish control. No. First, it developed more schools including more students. No. So, after the war, kung makikita ko natin before, The first na nag-develop ng mga schools sa Pilipinas, no, ng marami schools ay mga Americans. They develop the our educational system, no. Pero ang ang, ang mga pareho hindi hindi ho tumigil diyan, no. Uh, they develop more schools including more students, no. More chapters of the Legion of Mary were organized than in any other country in the world, no. So the organization of the Legions of Mary, no, ito ho ang malakas sa Pilipinas, no yung mga Marianista. No. President Ramon Magsaysay de dedicated the country to the Sacred Heart of Jesus in 1956. No. Number four, additional mission work was begun among tribal groups. Hindi ko sila tumigil. Kung titinan natin ang number of missionaries, no, combined with the evangelical of all the uh, pro quote -quote protestant missionaries in the Philippines, mas marami po ang missionaries ng Roman Catholic Church. No? Combined with all our uh, missionaries, <clears throat> so because of that, no, lumakas din po yung kanilang ano, lumakas din yung kanilang mission groups, including the tribal people, no. The church carried out significant social action, no. So, maraming mga social uh, <clears throat> social concern na issues, no, na kanilang naresolba, naging nakaroon na hu ng buhay, no, nakaroon na ng connection. Dati yung kasi ang church ang uh, ipunan, no? Siya ang humuhugot sa tao. Ngayon, ang ngayon, nagkaroon na naho ng malasakit ang church sa kanyang kongregasyon. Kaya, uh, hindi ho, bagamat nawala siya sa control, no? Nawala yung, yung uh, control ng Spanish, Spanish sa Pilipinas, no? Pero yung church that, at, at has regained its position, no? Has regained its position among its people, no? Then Reverend Rufino J. Santos, no, Reverend Santos was elevated to cardinal in 1960, to be followed after his death by Cardinal Jaime Sin and Ricardo Vidal. No, <clears throat> Filipino Catholics rejoice at the declared sainthood bestowed upon Lorenzo Ruiz by Pope Paul John II on October 1987. No, his beautification, which is one, is called blessed. No presented Ruiz as a model of virtue, uh, virtuous living and as intercessor and advocate for us before God. In the Philippines, he sent to the uh, present him as a model for veneration to all Catholics throughout the world. No. Sabi nila, the long journey to sainthood. It was written by Marcelino A. Foronda. No. Ruiz is the first Filipino canonized Roman Catholic saint. So ito ho mga bagay na nakatulong sa tinatawag ko nating development after the war ng Roman Catholic Church. In sharp contrast to its numerical and organizational growth, we find the Catholic Church growth in so many areas was not followed by an adequate growing number of priests. No. In the 1960s, there was only one Catholic priest for every 5,000 Catholics. At the same time, over 50,000, 50% of the priests were foreigners. Okay, let's talk about the development of the United Church of Christ in the Philippines. Sabi natin kanina, no? most of the first bishops, mission growth in the Philippines has uh, joined together, no? has united together. The call is for the unity. No? The call is for the unity in the Philippines. Protestant mission in the Philippines have had a good record for corporations since the first. You will call the committee agreement by which the mission bodies assign various geographical areas to each other. No. So we recognize other cooperative efforts in the following list of Protestant evangelical organizations. No, the Evangelical Union, 
the National Christian Council, the Philippine Federation of Evangelical Council, and the United Evangelical Church of the Philippines. No, na napag-usapan natin kahapon. No, in development from the National ngayon, later on it becomes the NCCP. The many efforts made to work together beginning with the committee agreement and the various Protestant evangelical organization present a foundation from which the United Church of Christ in the Philippines could be developed. In 1948, the following denomination united to form the UCCP no? or the United uh, Church of Christ in the Philippines. No? First is the United, uh, the Evangelical United, no? the Evangelical United, the Brethren Church, the Congregational Church, the Presbyterian Church, the Philippine Methodist Church, no? the Ilocano Convention of Disciples of Christ, and the Tagalog Area Disciples of Christ. No? And some also, some other members of different denominations have joined together to form what we call the UCCP, no? the United Church uh, the United Church of Christ in the Philippines. The following denomination did not join in the Union, the Methodist Church. No, iba po, iba po yung the Philippine Methodist Church and the Methodist Church. No, the Methodist Church is under the the United uh, the Methodist Church Mission USA. No, <clears throat> so ito mga hindi yung nakijoy. No, the Methodist Church, the Baptist Convention, the Christian and Missionary Alliance Churches, and the Episcopalian Church. At the time of the Union, the UCCP gained obvious strength in members. In 1963, the UCCP was reported to have over 142,000 members and thereby stood as the largest Protestant church in the country. No. Certainly, we can, stood, we can state good biblical basis for different denominations and churches to merge when they hold similar doctrines. If people do not join new churches, when they move to new communities, a loss occurred to those individuals as well as to the churches. Also, we do not forget that Christians grow toward maturity blesses both the persons and the community. However, if the maturity, quote-unquote maturity, achieved does not lead to greater effectiveness in sharing the gospel, it is inadequate. The kingdom of God grows both when it is rule increases in Christian. No, sa buhay kristyano, and when the maturing Christians share the gospel effectively with others to the point that others come to faith in Christ. <clears throat> so, so, after the World War, no, sa ngayon no, sa Pilipinas, no, sa ngayon sa Pilipinas, we have two major umbrellas. No, we have two major umbrellas in the Philippines. No, Mayroon po tayo ditong population of religious affiliation no? uh, based on the growth by October uh, 2010 and 2015. No? 2010 and 2015. No? Based on the uh, summary of our population on 2000 and 2015, no? <clears throat> Ang first uh, majority, no first majority pa rin na religion sa Pilipinas is what we call uh, the Roman Catholics. Pag tinawag natin ang Roman Catholics, it includes now the uh, Catholic Charismatic. No? It includes now the Catholic Charismatic. Uh, they are more than 80 million no? sa Pilipinas out of noong 2000, uh, 2015. No? Sa Islam mo ay more than 6 million. The evangelicals under the PCEC has more than 2 million. The Iglesia de Cristo is more than 2 million. No. The, non, the NCCP is more than 1.1 million. The Anglipayan is less than 756,000. The Seventh Day is 700,000. The Bible Baptist Church is 500,000. The UCCP is 490,000. The Jehovah's Witnesses is 438,000. No. And others. Total 2, ang population nun natin nun ay 100 million as of 2015 no so sabi natin kanina there are two now na ho uh, after the the world war 2 no meron lang po tayong iisang organization no iisang umbrella which is the NCCP now we have two umbrellas no we have two umbrellas in the Philippines so, sinabi natin umbrellas sila ho yung uh, because of the movement for the unity no 
sila ang nag-unify sa different uh, religious groups, no? Different, different denominations sa Pilipinas, no? Ito nakakatuwa sa Pilipinas, ang dami nating denomination, no? So we have two umbrellas, the NCCP and the PCTC, no? Later on, we will summarize, you know, we will summarize the effects of history, no? Ano ho yung mga lessons of history? Yun know, ang magiging closing lessons ho natin, no? So, sa Pilipinas, we, uh, we have two umbrellas, the NCCP and the PCEC. The NCCP is what we call the National Council of Churches in the Philippines, no? The NCCP is the National Council of Churches in the Philippines, no? The PCEC is the Philippine... Uh, Philippine Council of Evangelical Churches of Evangelical Churches no? So, NCCP National Council Council of Churches of Churches in the Philippines no? Ang PCEC naman po ay Philippine Evangelic, uh, Philippine Council of evangelical churches churches Yan. so we have two major umbrellas no ang prominent to ngayon is the PCC sila ang may pinakamalaking grupo no so let's discuss first the NCCP no the NCCP or the Sangguniang Pambansa ng mga simbahan sa Pilipinas no <clears throat> Uh, ay mayroon hong magsampo na uh, independent, quote-unquote, independent, quote-unquote, Protestant churches in the Philippine denomination. No? And also, there are 10 service-oriented organizations in the Philippines. The <coughs> ang NCCP po is a member of World Council of Churches. No? Member ho sila ng World Council of Churches and the Christian Conference of Asia. The NCCP represents close to 12 million Protestant adherents sa panahon po natin ngayon. Advocacy for environment protection and against large-scale mining are part of this core mission. Okay. <clears throat> Kailan na established ang NCCP? NCCP was established in 1963. No? It was established in 1963. Ang dami ho niyang mga names before, no? At now ay naging NCCP at hindi na po siya napalitan, no? <clears throat> Ang kanya ho mga pinanggalingang pangalan ay the Philippine Federation of Christian uh, Churches in 1949. He also became the Philippine Federation of Evangelical Churches in 1939. Oh, and the National Christian Council in 1929 and the Evangelical Union in 1901, no? and the Missionary Alliance in 1900. So, madali naman humakita ang headquarters ng NCCP, diyan na makikita ko nyo sa EDSA. No? So, sino ang mga membro, you know, uh, different denominations, member na ditawag po nating NCCP. No? Ito yung ilan ho sa mga major denominations, that is, an, uh, service-oriented organization under the NCCP. We have the Apostolic Catholic Church, no? The Apostolic Catholic Church. We have the Convention of Philippine Baptist Churches. No, the Convention of the Philippine Baptist Churches or CB, uh, CPBC. No? We have also the Episcopal Church in the Philippines. Episcopal Church in the Philippines. We have the Evangeli Eva uh, Iglesia Evangelica Metodista in the Islas Filipinas or the Iwilif. We have also the Iglesia Filipino Independiente. No. Yun hong <coughs> split, no? Yun hong split ng Roman Catholic Church. They join the NCCP, no? And we have the Iglesia Unida Ecumenical. Ecumenical, no? I iba ho ito sa Iglesia Unida, Iglesia Evangelica Unida de Cristo, no? Before the Iglesia Unida Evangelica Unida de Cristo is member, no? We have the Lutheran Church in the Philippines. We have the Salvation Army. Philippine Territory and the United Church of Christ in the Philippines and the Philippine Central Conference of the United Methodist Church no, in the Philippines. No. Yan po yung tatawag po natin 10, 10 major na members of the NCCP. 
No. Now we have sabi sabi natin we have the second umbrella which is the PCEC, no? The PCEC is the Philippine Council of Evangelical Churches of Evangelical Churches. No. It is an organization of more than 70 evangelical and mainline Protestant churches and more than 210 parachurch organization in the Philippines. No. Sabi natin it is uh an organization of more than 70 evangelical and mainline Protestant churches in the Philippines and more than 210 parachurches organization in the Philippines and it's still growing. No? It is also a member of World Evangelical Alliance. So sa atin po ngayong ano, sa atin po ngayong uh, Statistics, no? Tayo ang pumapangatlo, no? Tayo ang pumapangatlo. Uh, tayo pala pumapangalwa, no? The Evangelicals ang pumapangalwa sa uh, religious denomination sa Pilipinas, no? So, kung ang NCCP was born on 1963, PCC was organized as an umbrella organization in 1965, no? It is the largest denom uh, 1965. <clears throat> I would like just to read uh, no, some of the known members of the PCEC. No. We have the Abundant, Abundant Grace Ministry, the Alliance of Bible Christian Communities of the Philippines or ABCO. We have the Asia Pacific uh, Regional Office of the Church of the Nazarene. We have the Baptist Conference of the Philippines. We have the Charismatic Full Gospel Ministries. We have Christ Faith Fellowship. We have the Christ Jesus Our Life Family Churches. We have the Christ the Living Stone Fellowship. We have Christ to the Philippines. We have Christ Commission Fellowship. We have the Kamakok or the Christian Missionary Alliance Churches of the Philippines. Ito ho yung ano, ito ho ngayon yung Philippine group under the Christian and Mission Missionary Alliance USA, no? Na isa ho sa mga unang-unang uh, dumating sa Pilipinas. They never joined the uh, before the then uh or they joined the what we call the committee agreement and they were they were assigned before in Mindanao, no? Pero ngayon may mga mission Luzon mission na po sila, no? And we have the Christian Bible Church Outreach Conference. We have the Christian Evangelical Mission Foundation. So we have the Church of God in Christ. No, we have the, we have the Church of the Four Square, Gospel in the Philippines, the Church of the Nazarene. No, uh, we have the Day by Day Christian Ministries. We have the Dulos for Christ. We have the Evangelical Free Church. We have the Free Mission, the Philippine Assemblies of the Firstborn. We have the First Christian Pentecostal Church. We have the Free Believers uh, in Christ Fellowship. We have the Free Methodist Church. We have the Free Will Baptist. We have the General Com General Baptist Conference in the Philippines. We have the uh, Light of the World, no? Uh, Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, Lord of the Nation, the uh, Convention of the Southern Baptist, no? The National Council of Christian Community of Churches. We have the Pentecostal Church of God, Asian Mission, the Philippine Advent Christian Churches, the Philippine Bible Church of God. The Philippine Christian Alliance Ministries. We have the Philippine Evangelical Holy Church. We have the Philippine General Council of the Assemblies of God. We have the Philippine Missionary Fellowship. The Philippine Pentecostal Holy Church. No. General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of the Philippines. We have the Visayan Church. We have the Universal Pentecostal Church. Victory Christian Fellowship of the Philippines. World for the World. World International Ministries. And Worldwide Church of God. And Zion Christian Committees. And many others. No, uh, kung babasahin ko, baka kasama ho dito yung uh, let, kasama ng JL dito, ano? Kasama ng JL. No. <clears throat> so, there are also other para churches. No, there are also other para churches. Kung sinabi ho natin para churches, they are not church, no, but they are an, they are organization that helps the church, no. We have the Action International Ministries. We have the Agape Philippine American Ministries. Alay Pag-asa Christian Foundation. Alliance Graduate School. Amazing Grace World Mission Foundation. Asia Evangelical Fellowship Philippines. Asia Graduate School of Intercultural Studies. 
Asia Pacific Media Ministries, Asia Pacific Nazarene Theological Seminary, Asia Pacific Theological Seminary, ASEAN Center for Leadership and Educational Development, ASEAN, ASEAN Center for Mission, ASEAN Christian Outreach, ASEAN Mission for Holistic Medicine Foundation, ASEAN Seminary Ministry, Asian Theological Seminary, Assemblies of God Korean District, Assemblies of God Missionary Fellowship, Assist International Foundation, Association of Baptists for World Evangelism, no, uh, and so many others. No, ito ho yung natawag ho natin uh, mga para-churches. They are helping churches now for uh, for the growth, or for the Christian growth in the Philippines. No, for the church growth in the Philippines. As of today, no, according to the Joshua Project, no, according to the Joshua Project, as of today, uh, the, the Philippines has num we have 200 no we have 200 people groups no we have 200 people groups so may no I cannot categorize soon nila yung Pilipinas a Joshua project in the people groups no <clears throat> people group unreached is around 30 out of the 200 no we have 30 unreached people group no it, it composed of around 15% of our population. Malaki na po pula, no? 15% of our population. <clears throat> and most of this population, no, ay nasa highlands, no? Most of this population are nasa highlands, particularly in southern part of the archipelago, no? So, <clears throat> our total population today is 107 million. Population unreached is around 5 million. Ang evangelical annual growth rate po is around 3.1%. Medyo mabaga doon tayo. No? So, <clears throat> sa buong mundo ho, ang total unreached, no? <clears throat> so, sabi natin, sa buong mundo, uh, sa Pilipinas, we have, ano? Uh, 30 unreached group. Sa buong mundo, uh, according to their category of the 1040 windows, no? Pag sinabi natin 1040 windows, they are located in the 10 and 40 degrees north of the equator, which is, kaya ko tinawag yung 1040 windows. No. <clears throat> this area contains the largest majority of Hindus, Muslim, and Buddhist believers in the world. No. So, there are uh, countries that are in the Middle East and the North Africa and Asia. This area contains the largest majority of Hindu, Muslim, and uh, Buddhist. No. They are estimated of around 5 million unreached people groups in the 1040 windows, no? which is roughly around 83% of the unreached people group in the world. The real tragedy is only 3% are currently working in the 1040 windows. So, anong kinalaman ng church history ito? Bakit natin pinag-usap ito? No. <clears throat> Kung bakit kita natin development ng history ng iglesia simula noon, ang ganyan ay... No, uh, it reaches almost all the world. It reaches almost all the world. No. Pero meron na lang tayong maliliit na porsyento na hindi nare-reach. No. At ang problema, mas marami yung binibigay yung focus ngayon sa mga rich na people areas, no, kaysa doon sa mga unreached, no. Mas marami yung finances ang napupunta sa rich people group kaysa doon sa unreached people group, no. Kaya we need to ano, we need to we need to pray. No, we need to pray. Uh, para ho tayo maging bahagi ang tinatawag ko natin uh, world mission no? maging bahagi ang tinatawag ko natin world mission to reach what we call the end of the world to reach the end of the world so ngayon no, sa Pilipinas almost all of the Philippines has been reached by the word of God and the Filipinos are now ascending uh, sending country no? we are now sending missionaries to the different part of the world at tayo ho din ho ay magiging bahagi na kasaysayan ng ibang mundo, ng ibang bansa, tungkol so kung paano ho nila naabot ang mabuting balita. So ang kasaysayan ho ng ating bansa, ang kasaysayan ng ebangilismo sa ating bansa, ay nawapo ay maging bahagi din naman ng kasaysayan ng ibang bansa kung paano ho nila nakilala ang ating Panginoong Yeso Cristo. Once again po, ah, uh, in behalf of uh, Far Eastern Evangelical Theological Seminary, 
Magandang araw po uh, sa susunod, ipapakita ko natin yung summary and lessons of our history. Once again po, pagpulayan po tayo ng ating Panginoon.